What's up guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. I am so excited to be back. It's Tech Tip Tuesday. We're finally getting back in the hang of things here with these. Been away because there's a lot of stuff going on. You guys have been so great lately, doing a ton of orders for our Black Mouth Spoons, and I really appreciate it. Been doing some jig tying orders too. So we're finally caught up on things, thank goodness. And now we can get back into some videos for you because there is some fun stuff happening here that I really want to get into and showcase to you guys. So today's tech tip video, we're going clamming and specifically razor clamming on the Washington coast. So stay tuned, you're not gonna to want to miss this one. Tons of great info. Peace out. So guys, I had the awesome opportunity to go with my wife a couple weeks ago for our first experience of razor clam digging. And this Tech Tip Tuesday, we're gonna show you exactly how to catch these. And what we're talking about first for this Tech Tip Tuesday is equipment you're gonna need. Now what's great about razor clamming there is beginner easy ways to get into it, meaning wise expense cost, um, just simple items, to more of an advanced expert level where you can spend a little bit more money, but you get more out of it. So it's really a great way to get something extremely tasty, but affordable. So you guys, the first honest thing you guys need is a fishing license of some sort, and specifically, a shellfish license. When you buy a combo license to fish freshwater, saltwater, it's included. Washington state laws here need to have a shellfish license. So it's easily purchased at whatever sporting goods retailer you can. Shoot, even Walmart sells them. Um, but specifically, guys, to look at the items needed, that license is key number one. The second piece, you need some way while on the beach to hold on to your limit of clams. Now in Washington State, it is 15 razor clams a person, which to be honest with you, that's a lot, especially if you're getting the bigger sized ones. So you need some way to organize and keep these separate because each person has to have their own separate limit bag. Now this right here is a clam ring. This holds all of your 15 clams nicely and organized and it's really easy granted they're like five bucks at your sporting goods store Fred Meyer Walmart you know wherever you may be at we'll have these okay and that's that's what we chose to go with there are other ways to do it you could spend a dollar and use a laundry bag and throw it over your shoulder that way the clams are out of the ground off the water everything else so it's really all up to you you need some sort of bag to hold these now these clam ring bags are super nice because they have a metal ring inside of that, you can see here. That ring holds this open so as you're grabbing your clams and throwing them in, everything stays together. Now what's nice on the side here is these also come with a loop strap. So you can put it through a belt, you can do a lot of different things. Now something I found really handy, you put a little carabiner on here, clips right to your belt, all the more easy and you're on your way. So that's item two, right? Now the third item that I really feel is essential is the clam gun itself. Now again, this is where beginner entry level versus advanced and up, you wanna say expert level, will really get you. So this is your standard clam gun, right? Very simple, this is a BOMAC PVC version. You can totally make your own. I'm gonna do a video on how to do that as well. They're really easy um, and inexpensive. This thing is only $16 down at uh, Outdoor Emporium in Seattle. It's really nice, it has these handle already built into the lid. It has a vent hole on top, so the way that you go about doing clam digging, right? You find your depression where the clam shows itself, and I'll go through this here in a second, but that vent hole is key to getting suction as you lift the sand out. 
Now the difference between a $15, $16 clam gun and an aluminum or steel $85 to $100 one, yeah, it's a lot easier to pull this up. So PVC makes it a little difficult, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. So beginner level, highly recommend that the first couple times you do this, go with the PVC version. It's really easy. If you know you're going to do this a lot more times than just once, um, I go invest in the ones that are fifty to a hundred dollars because that metal cuts through the sand easier. It also typically has some sort of vent system that makes the pulling up all the easier as well. So essential item three is your clam gun itself. Now, when you're talking about how you find these clams, so a lot of the times you'll see people out there walking around and you're just waiting to see at that low tide as you walk through the sand and I'm going to show here video footage of what we were doing but as you walk through the sand those clams can feel your weight and depression against the sand so if you happen to be really close to a clam and they have their neck right at the surface right and you make a depression and weight or stomping that clam's going to pull itself down and as it pulls down it leaves a little hole and you'll see that indent hole that's where you position your clam gun over the top and you go from there pushing it down now there's also a way you guys can do this with the clam shovel and that'll be another video that I can show to you guys but for just a specific clam gun you put it over the top of that hole you twist as you go down get it to where you're almost to the top put your thumb on that vent valve lift it all the way up release the vent the sand falls out. If you did it properly, that clam is going to be right in that month of sand. Sometimes you have to go two pushes down to really get that clam if they're super deep. So that is the basics of razor clamming. It's so easy to do. My wife had a blast. Now she's also, uh, you know, pregnant as well. So we had to kind of do it a little bit on the ease of her end. But she was just ecstatic. I mean, she got her 15 clams was running around going back to truck limited before I did so uh, it was a blast now it's a great family event to bring a lot of people to do and I highly recommend it so something though however in more of an advanced way to get these clams to show themselves is what I was doing here now we're going to come back to some video footage from that day of clamming what we did and what I found out these clams were not showing themselves very easily so, and a lot of times you'll be walking around and they just start sucking down. You can see them easy enough. Now, what I was doing was I was taking my clam gun, pointing it down at the ground, and I'd start in a grid pattern, starting left to right, and I'd work my way back and forth, hitting the sand. And as I hit the sand with the weight of the clam gun, a clam itself would then show, and then boom, I can do it, putting the clam gun in the sand. Now, a way that I saw that I thought was even more genius was some of the veteran folk who were out there. Some of them had a long PVC piece or a walking stick, a broom handle, and they had that tied to a piece of rope to them, and they would take that and just pound the sand as they walked around. Those clams show themselves when they feel that extra um, disturbance on the surface. And that's what sucks them down. They show themselves, make them super easy to catch. So I really hope this helps you guys know, first off, the gear you need, how to find these clams, and then typically and specifically, even more so, how you go about doing it. So we're going to finish this last part. The video card died. So thank you again, guys, so much for watching. I really hope you took away a lot from this video. So stay tuned for a whole lot more on more razor claiming techniques and what we can do as well as some fun other beach activities while you are out on the coast of Washington State. So tight lines and we'll catch you out on the water next time. Take care and fish on!